Joe Jaworski, Democratic candidate for Texas Attorney General. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, so far, you are in second place ahead of Lee Merritt by 1,400 votes. And so uh, he's saying this isn't over yet. What do you say? Well, I certainly respect Mr. Merritt, and I would do the same thing, I'm sure, in his shoes. So he needs to do what he thinks best. Uh, I'm in second place. We won the runoff. Uh, we'll wait for the final you know, uh, confirmation from the Secretary of State, but my best wishes to him and all my colleagues. And how many votes do you think may still be outstanding uh, before the Texas Democratic Party certifies the election on March 13th? I don't think that there is near enough to make a difference. Uh, and I think that this time next week, we're going to see Joe Jaworski firmly in the runoff as the second place vote getter. And it'll be a new race, Jack. I was just going to ask you about that. So at that point, of course, historically, what we've seen in primary runoff elections, far fewer people go to the polls. So what will you be doing to make sure that your supporters get to the polls and vote? Well, I am proud to tell you that I got 196,000 plus votes. And I think those were intentional earned votes. And we probably even left some on the table because you know folks intend to vote in a primary and sometimes don't get around to doing it. So we'll make sure that we get all our supporters back. Uh, I think that there's going to be a great drop off as you suggest, Jack. Uh, and that's historically proven every time there is a runoff after a primary. So we'll do some calculations, but my best guess is there'll be around 500, 600,000 votes in the Democratic runoff. Uh, and that is about half of what showed up on the primary. And I think history bears that out. So uh, that's our plan is to uh, get all our votes and then get some new ones. And let me ask you, uh, Judge Mike Fields uh, reportedly said that uh, he believes that all of the Democratic candidates in this race should actually just get behind Rochelle Garza because she was in first place, had 43 percent of the vote. What do you make of that? Well, I, I think <laughs> I think Judge Fields was speaking his truth, and I called him to thank him for, for being honest, but I respectfully declined the invitation, as I think everyone who's in a runoff all across the state. And depending on, on whether you're a sports fan or not, you know, it's somewhat akin uh, to being down 20 points at the beginning of the fourth quarter and asking the quarterback just to hand over the ball and sit down. That's not how we do things here. And, and we shouldn't do things here like that. We're, we're not quitters, and I'm certainly not one either. And uh, should it be certified, and you uh, are definitely are in the runoff, what are your priority issues? And what, is your mess what would your message be to voters? Well, first off, it is who can beat Ken Paxton in November. So what we now have is more clarity, Jack. Uh, we know that Mr. Paxton and George P. Bush are in the Republican primary. So this, this you know, mantra that Eva Guzman uh, or maybe somebody else will save the GOP and allow them to clean house, we know that's not going to happen. So now we know Mr. Paxton has the, the firm lead in a GOP that will favor him because of the Trump endorsement. So number one, Joe Jaworski can beat Ken Paxton, and I'm the better choice as between me and Ms. Garza to do that in November. Secondly, it's about the vote, and it's about consumer protection, and it's about protecting civil rights. Those three things are what the attorney general should be doing, and that's really nonpartisan. That's everybody's benefit. Why do you believe you would be better for Democrats uh, to go up against Ken Paxton if, in fact, he does win the primary than Rochelle Garza? Uh, Jack, that's the essential question, and I'm ready to answer it. Because in a primary, you know, you have one set of voters. In a general election in November, you have three or four times the number of voters. It's a huge factor. And so Democrats, moderate Republicans, and independents are going to decide whether there is a candidate who can beat Ken Paxton. And I will just tell you, as a former mayor of Galveston, who has served in a nonpartisan role as an attorney for 30 years, with all respect to Ms. Garza's young career, uh, I have a, a great deal more experience in litigation and in the State Bar of Texas. And so I think it matters that local government experience, experience as a lawyer, and then having run before and earned votes, 
This is what's going to cause moderate Republicans, independents, and all Democrats to come together to get more of a vote count than Mr. Paxton will. I don't think Ms. Garza can say that. Let me ask you, you mentioned civil rights. What are your concerns uh, about the first round of the election? Because we, we have seen reports from across the state of more mail-in ballots uh, being rejected because they don't comply with the new state law. Now, yes, it's true that people have until March 7th to cure those ballots. Um, so what concerns do you have about that? And what are you doing to get the message out that people have until Monday, March 7th to fix their ballots? Well, that is an important point. And I, I would like to tell you that the fraud that exists in elections is not the idea that people are fake voting. The fraud is that our government has failed. Uh, and voting is the most essential aspect of American citizenship. And the legislature, with the governor's permission and Ken Paxton's approval, have made it so hard to vote that even people who are following the rules don't get their ballots. Can I give you a specific example, Jack? My son, who is out of state in school, timely requested a ballot. It was mailed to him. He never received it. Uh, that is just one example. But what about all the people that tried to fill out their ballots, but the rules changed? Now, thank goodness they're giving us a chance to correct these ballots. But you know, a lot of people aren't familiar with that rule. So we're putting that message out on social media. We're expecting the you know, journalists and, and the news agencies to share in that uh, information. The government has failed. It's not doing its job in helping people vote. Uh, that's why I long ago came up with the idea, and I've run on it hard, that instead of a voter integrity unit, there needs to be a voter access unit because you ought to be able to call and rely upon the government to protect and enhance your voting rights. Joe Jaworski, Democratic candidate for Texas Attorney General, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, Jack. Thank you.